Welcome back to the channel everybody. So there is no doubt in anybody's mind that Microsoft Flight Simulator is one of the most demanding games to date. For the majority of people, playing at 4K or even 1440p at high settings is pretty much out of the question. It requires a massive amount of CPU and GPU power just to get decent frame rates. Now today we're gonna to be focusing mostly on the graphics card side of things. So unless you plan on paying a crazy price for a GPU right now, you're gonna to have to turn down your settings just to make things playable at those higher resolutions. But is there a way to squeeze out just a little bit more performance from your graphics card without going and spending thousands of dollars on a higher tier GPU? Well, the answer is yes, there absolutely is. And it's overclocking. Now, this is nothing new. Of course, people have been overclocking GPUs forever now. The difference here is how Microsoft Flight Simulator handles your overclock card. And that's where things get a little complicated. So today we are gonna be taking this 4K monitor here and a 2080 Ti and pushing it to the absolute max to see how much of an increase we can get in our frame rates. So let's head over to the desk here and see what we can do. All right, so I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. You probably already know this, but overclocking is tricky. It's not as straightforward as you might think. It's not like you just press a button and then boom, you get more performance. There's a lot that goes into it and it is extremely dependent on your system, what kind of silicon you got. You could have a good chip, a bad chip, one that behaves well with memory increases or one that doesn't. Some graphics cards handle your GPU clock increases a lot better. So what you have to do is watch this, know the process, and then apply it to your own card, but don't expect the same results. So the first thing we're gonna do is see how much of an overclock we can put on this specific graphics card. Now I'm using an EVGA 2080 Ti. Uh, so for the overclocking software, I'm gonna be using Precision X1. A lot of people can use MSI Afterburner if you don't have an EVGA card. I just use it because it is the same brand as a card and it's a pretty simple uh, bit of software here. So the first step is to open it up and then apply a reasonable clock, uh, a good starting point. Uh, so let's just go ahead and do 500. Oops. 500 for the memory. Uh, let's give it 100 for the GPU. We also wanna take our power and GPU temp sliders, put them all the way to the right. Um, what I do is take the voltage and put that all the way up to 100 as well. I don't have to mess with the fans on mine because it is water-cooled. So my fans, uh, the pump speed and everything is tied through other software. It's not controlled through here. So just leave that alone. I will apply it. And then we're going to start with the benchmarking. And what I use is the Heaven benchmark initially. Um, and then I go through the various other benchmarks to see if I can get the same stability once I push heaven all the way to the max, to the point where it crashes. That's when you back it off a little bit and then test all the other benchmarking software. That way you get different loads um, and, and different situations where it might crash. For our first benchmark, I like to use um, the heaven benchmark. It's, it's the most basic one. It's just, it's been around for a long time. I use it as, as a benchmark as my initial testing. So I push the, the graphics card all the way to the max through heaven, and then I run it through a, a series of other benchmarking softwares uh, to see if it's still, still stable through all of those different applications. So let's go ahead and start it out. I put a 500 megahertz increase on the memory clock, uh, as well as a 100 megahertz increase for the GPU. So our target is bumped all the way to the right for both sliders for power and temp. And I don't mess with the fan curves because it is water cooled. So we're sitting at like 40 degrees right now. So let's run this here. And while it's running, we're going to bring uh, Precision X1 over and just start bumping everything up until it crashes. Then we will back it down um, to uh, a little way, a little bit before it crashed, just to have a little bit of wiggle room and set that as our our standard. Okay, so it's handling this just fine. So what I'm gonna do is bring up Precision X1, kind of put it over on the side here, 
and start increasing my memory clock until I see artifacting. So let's give it a pretty big jump now of 750. Looks like that's fine. Okay. And of course, this is just to see major artifacting right away and then pull it back from that point. Obviously, once you start to benchmark things, that's when you put on the most load and you'll start to see it crash or show weird problems. And that's when you know you have to back it up even further. So let's go to 1000. Oh, that's 100. Apply and see what we get. So if 1500 is too much, let's just keep it at 1300. Apply it. And now let's push our GPU clock as, uh, as much as we can here. So I'm not sure what the increments are for this. I believe it's every 15. So let's do 115. You definitely have different results if you were using just the stock cooler that came with it. Now this is the XC Black, I believe. Um, so that version, it's, it's not the best cooler. I'm sure the temperatures would be going pretty high right now, pushing it this hard, but underwater, it's maintaining a pretty steady temperature. Crashed. Okay, so that's clearly our max. Uh, I'm not gonna go anywhere near 260 because unfortunately, what passes in the benchmarks typically will not pass in, in heavily loaded games like Microsoft Flight Simulator. So let's pull these back a little bit. Let's go 1000 on the memory and we'll just do 150 on our GPU clock and see how much performance increase we can get with something like that. And then once I know that it can run that with those settings, then I'll try to push it a little bit further. So now I'm gonna go ahead and run all those other benchmarks, make sure we have a stable overclock and then launch the simulator. All right, now that those are done, we have a stable overclock, everything passed with 1000 for the memory, 150 for the GPU, our power and GPU temp target all the way to the right, and also our voltage slider pushed all the way to the right. So everything looks good to start the simulator. So what we'll be doing to test this overclock in Microsoft Flight Simulator is Prior to shooting this video, I loaded up a flight from JFK that would fly around Manhattan and then land at another airport. And what I did was record that using Flight Control Replay. And I'll be doing a video on that. Go ahead and subscribe, that way you get uh, notified when I release that video. It's kind of a tutorial on how to use Flight Control Relay Replay. So we recorded that flight and what you can do with that recorded flight is play it over and over again and measure the frames per second consistently every single time with stock and various overclocks. You'll get a printed FPS um, average, min, max, um, all your times and everything. What you can do then is measure your increase that you gained over stock. So what I'll do then is I will load up the sim, load up that specific flight, change the settings to 4K Ultra, and then run the FPS benchmark using no overclock, a kind of mid-range overclock, and then the absolute max that I'm able to achieve without it crashing. Then we can throw that up on a graph and see how much of a percentage we can increase by overclocking our system. Well, there you go. There's a noticeable increase if you take the time to overclock your GPU. Now, there is a small caveat to that, and it's the fact that the simulator crashed multiple times when trying to load to the home screen or when I was trying to load a flight when I had a pretty hefty overclock on there. Now, to get around that, all I had to do is load up the simulator, load up the flight, get ready to fly, and then just alt tab to precision X1, apply my saved preset overclock and then fly. And doing that, I didn't have any crashes, even with 1400 megahertz increase on the memory, as well as 150 on the GPU clock. So if you take the numbers that I showed you guys, we got an 11.7% increase, which equated to about four frames per second average when flying in 1440p. 
and there was an even bigger increase when I switched it to 4K. We had a 19.3% increase, and that was about five frames per second average. Now that bump in FPS might not seem like a whole lot, but that can be the difference between a smooth experience and having stuttering. For both of these resolutions, I continuously stayed above 30 frames per second, which provides a pretty smooth flying experience overall. Of course, that would be better if it was 60 FPS, but even with a 3090 at 4K, pushing 60 frames a second is very difficult. So I'm very curious to see if we can get this same kind of a performance increase with the 2060 Super that I have back there. I'm probably gonna go ahead and take this out, put that one in, that is not water-cooled, so it's gonna be on air in a stock configuration, push it to the max and see if we can get those same percentages with a different card. Stay tuned for that video. Now a little bit of a disclaimer at the end here. So everybody's system, their graphics card, their CPU, their memory, it's all just a little bit different. So your results are probably going to vary from what I saw here. Now what I hope this video has done has shown you that you can play around with the graphics card and try to push that little bit of extra performance without damaging anything. So it doesn't hurt to give it a shot to see if you can get a couple more frames per second out of your system for free. Now in certain cases, that might be the difference between a playable frame rate and something that just can't work. And that might allow you to continue flying until these GPU prices come back down, which by the looks of it might be next year. So let me know in the comments how much of an increase you guys saw when you did overclocking on your system or if it didn't work at all. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you check out the description below, you can see links to my Instagram, Twitter, and my Patreon page. That way you can support the channel. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon. I'll see you guys in the next one.